What's up, sunshine? Welcome to CNN 10. I'm Coy Wire. It's Wednesday, May the 1st. We enter what may be the last month of school for many of you. Embrace it. Someday you're going to look back and say, ah, the good old days. All right, we have two big stories we want to lead with today. First, let's head back to New York City, where pro-Palestinian protests at Columbia have escalated. The university started suspending students on Tuesday after they did not obey a deadline to vacate their encampment on the West Lawn of the Manhattan campus. But Columbia did not call in the police to break up the encampment. So hours later, student protesters moved from the encampment and broke into Hamilton Hall, one of the main academic buildings on campus, where they have barricaded themselves inside and draped a banner out the window that reads Hind's Hall. A student group explained the banner honors a five-year-old girl, Hind Rajab, who was killed in Gaza. Columbia has now shut down the campus to everyone except the students who live in dorms on campus and a small group of essential faculty. Next, we go to Kenya, where sadly, officials now report dozens of people were killed and more than 100 others injured after floods swept through Maihu, the town in the northwest region of the country. Heavy rain in the region led to flooding, which was further exacerbated by a nearby dam breaking, causing water to rush through the streets. This latest incident comes after floods have inundated Kenya several times since March, killing more than 100 additional people and displacing thousands of Kenyans from their homes. 10 second trivia, which European capital city is home to a famous structure originally constructed for the 1889 World's Fair? London, Munich, Paris, or Rome? If you said Perry, ooh la la, wee oui, wee, oui, the Eiffel Tower is one of the most famous landmarks in the world, standing some 300 meters or 984 feet up towards the Parisian sky. It is getting more and more expensive to live in many cities around the world. One of the biggest reasons, the rising cost of rent. Some may think that cities offer superfluous activities like all the cultural attractions from museums to shows, all the retail stores and restaurants. But many people like all of those options and may also want to live in cities for more job opportunities. But at the same time, housing can be limited. There's only so much room for developers to build, right? The combination of lots of demand and limited supply drives rent prices up. That's why many cities subsidize housing. That means they use government policy to make housing more affordable. Melissa Bell takes us to Paris to show us how it's working there. The view is second to none, the location as central as they get. But this rent-controlled apartment is now Catherine's for just $800 a month. Bienvenue. La première fois que je l'ai vue, j'ai eu un tel degré d'émotion que je me suis mise à pleurer. <laughs> and this is the building she was able to move into. Reopened amid great pomp in 2021 after some 16 years of renovation, the Samaritaine is one of the French capital's most iconic spots for luxury shopping and dining, not to mention its five-star hotel. But the Samaritaine was also obliged as part of its reconstruction to include 96 apartments for the city of Paris to let at modest rates. If you let the market uh, act, we will have only uh, empty houses, uh, second homes for uh, foreigners or rich French people. If you want uh, Paris to stay a, a living city with people inhabiting in the city, we must uh, develop a lot of social holdings. Across Europe, there's a danger of cities turning to museums and ordinary people being pushed out. But here in Paris, there's the added particularity that this was a city entirely redesigned in the mid-19th century. And that's exactly what gives it its beauty, but also what makes it difficult for the city to adapt to the needs of the 21st century. Already, it is one in nine Parisians that benefits. People like Zina, whose place in the Samaritaine development allows her to live close to the central Paris hospital where she works. An open-air museum that is now seeking to help those who keep its schools and hospitals running to be able to benefit from them too. All right. 
you've all probably heard of Tesla, the electric car company owned by Elon Musk, sells more EVs than any other company in the world. Well, did you know that its biggest competitor is a Chinese company named BYD? China's electric car market has exploded the last few years. There are now more than 200 electric vehicle manufacturers in China. CNN's Mark Stewart takes us inside a recent auto show in Beijing to show us how China is charging up as it works toward the future of automobiles. This is Auto China, the largest car show in all of China and one of the largest in the world. There are a few gas powered cars here, but the real focus is electric. I came here mainly checking on EVs. Now there are many EV brands, so there are lots of options. We like the standout eye catching color. There are more than 200 EV makers in China. Take a look over here. This is the line to see the latest offering from Xiaomi. It's a Chinese tech company known for its phones. This is the much talked about Xiaomi SU7. Yes, it has an aerodynamic design. It can accelerate very quickly. Its battery can take you for about 500 miles, but its most distinct point is this touch screen. You can use it to control almost all aspects of your life. You can turn the lights in your home on and off. It can even start the coffee maker. This isn't just about performance. Geopolitics plays a role, too. Elon Musk flew to China over the weekend on a surprise trip and met Chinese Premier Li Chung. Musk has his biggest overseas Tesla factory in Shanghai, so he has big stakes in China. According to state media, Li said that China is open to foreign business and wants to make it easier for global companies to come here. In addition, Musk said Tesla's Gigafactory in Shanghai is its best performing. Tesla wants to be an even bigger player in the Chinese market in addition to its American base. It's good to see electric vehicles making progress in China. All cars will be electric in the future. As a piece of American technology, Tesla faced lots of restrictions in China out of security concerns. Until this visit, Tesla cars were sometimes not allowed to enter airports, government compounds, and other sensitive areas. Well, this time, after Musk met Lee, Chinese authorities announced that such restrictions on Tesla cars are no more because the company's China-made vehicles have passed the country's data security requirements. As Elon Musk looks for success here in China, for Chinese car makers looking to break into the American market, that may not be so easy. Top U.S. officials have expressed concern that Chinese cars could potentially collect data and send it back here to Beijing, a potential blow for China, the world's largest auto exporter. Mark Stewart, CNN, Beijing. For today's story, getting a 10 out of 10, we want you to meet Emo, the smiling robot. It's a face created by engineers at Columbia that can make eye contact. But even better, it's been programmed by two AI models to anticipate when you're about to smile, then beats you to it. Raise your hand if you think that's cool. Okay, now raise your hand if you think that's creepy. <laughs> Emo can predict your smile 840 milliseconds before it even starts. It's equipped with high-res cameras in its eyes and 26 robotic facial muscles to produce this gregarious grin. Now, that is some technology we can all smile about. <laughs> Congrats to all the Tigers at Ripley High School in Mississippi, especially Coach Wilcher's class for submitting our Your Word Wednesday winner on my TikTok page, superfluous, an adjective meaning beyond what is sufficient or necessary. Nice one. All right, today's shout out is going to Washington Middle School in Green Bay, Wisconsin. We see you, Mr. Lascott, bringing the heat. Thank you for all the lovely signatures and all the messages. Much love. That is incredible stuff. And this shout out goes to Mrs. Westlake's transition class. They're all over there hanging out at William Amos Hoff High School in Cornelius, North Carolina. Look at this art. And, um, you know, you wanted to know how I decide whether or not to wear a tie each day. You uh, apparently vote on it. Well, sometimes I like just rolling up my sleeves and being casual. Sometimes I'm feeling kind of fancy. Rise up. Thanks for all the love, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow on CNN 10.